Residents in a village in Suffolk are calling for 24-hour policing after their post office was raided for a fourth time. Officers are appealing for information to help catch the man responsible for the latest robbery in Capel St Mary. The day after another raid, the post office is shut and stories like this are becoming all too common. Locals are becoming increasingly concerned their village is being repeatedly targeted. Dreadful because we can't get our pensions, can we? Strangely enough, I said to you yeah. coming along, I said I'm going to get my money and get out quick because in case the bandits come. I didn't <laughs> realise it had been done again. No. We haven't got police 24-7 in the village and um, I think they know the thieves do know that they're going to get away with it. Police have released this CCTV picture. They believe the man who raided the post office yesterday is the same person who targeted it last Friday. It's the fourth time in 18 months this post office has been raided. Police say the robber left the village yesterday driving a blue Ford displaying two different number plates. The man is described as between 35 and 45, large build, around six foot tall. I'm particularly interested in hearing from people who were in the area at the time, witnessed what happened or in the area prior to then and saw any suspicious activity in the area. Suffolk police say they've upped patrols in the village. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, as staff deal with the aftermath of yesterday's raid, they hope the person responsible is caught quickly. Felicity Simper, BBC Look East, Capel St Mary. The police have arrested four more people after a 21-year-old man with life-threatening injuries was found in Orwell Country Park in Ipswich on Bank Holiday Monday. His condition is still critical but stable. A total of ten people have now been arrested. A horse trader who was jailed for neglecting more than a hundred animals has lost an appeal against the conviction. Last year, James Gray was jailed for 24 weeks and banned from keeping horses, ponies and donkeys. Three animal sanctuaries in Norfolk later cared for several of the animals. A plan by BAA to rent out warehouse space at Stansted Airport to non-airport related businesses has been turned down. Uttersford District Council was told that much of the 60,000 square footage has been empty since it was built. The council decided it was against the planning policy. Bernard Matthews has been explaining today why it wants to become Britain's largest producer of free-range turkey. The firm's bought a rival company and plans to more than triple free-range production. A few years ago, Bernard Matthews was synonymous with the turkey twizzler and highly processed food. Now the company will become Britain's biggest producer of free-range turkeys, all because it's buying a Lincolnshire firm called Lynx Turkeys. Bernard Matthews has had a pretty rotten few years. First, the row over turkey twizzlers, then the outbreak of bird flu at one of its farms in Suffolk. Sales slumped and jobs were lost. Now new boss Jeff Halliwell is trying to rebuild trust in the brand by emphasising its links with British farming. All Bernard Matthews products are now made with 100% home-produced meat. During the recession, because it's more expensive to produce, free range has taken a bit of a, a step back. But in the long, medium to long term, we do think that this will grow and therefore we want to be a part of it. We want to make sure that people can buy turkey and enjoy turkey, whether it's free range or whatever. The nature of the company isn't changing completely. Only one in ten of its turkeys will be free range. But as it tries to bring British turkey consumption up to European levels, Bernard Matthews must keep in step with changing customer tastes. Richard Bond, BBC Look East, Norfolk. Work to upgrade the railway line from Suffolk to London will continue for the next four years. The overhead lines at the London end are being renewed at a cost of £200 million. The work started two years ago and regularly causes disruption at weekends. This year's Latitude Festival in Suffolk has already sold out with two months left to go. Since it started in 2006, the three-day event at Henham Park near Southwold has expanded. More than 100,000 people are expected to attend. The authority in charge of the Norfolk and Suffolk Broads is planning to bid for world heritage status. The area already has national park status and is Britain's largest protected wetland. It's hoped world heritage status will promote the site internationally and attract new visitors. The Broads Authority members will decide next week whether to go ahead with the bid. One of the best known figures in golf has been in Norfolk today, but Peter Allis wasn't on commentary duty. He was wearing a rather different cap. He runs his own charity for children and members of Sheringham Golf Club were presenting special wheelchairs to children from Norwich. 
sunny Sheringham, a sensational setting for the voice of golf to make a difference to the lives of three Norwich boys. You know, they started playing this morning at half past seven. They had 46 teams signed up for this day. So there's a hell of a lot of people playing. Mm. Yeah. He didn't look altogether comfortable. Over 25 years, the Peter Alice powered wheelchair crusade has raised nearly £7 million. Sheringham golfers were teeing it up today to raise more. Basically, it's from sort of four, four years of age to sort of 15 or 16. And uh, it gets very emotional when they come in and you see the look of joy on their faces when they, they sort of get the old accelerator going and when you give them all down, cut it out on the motorway, keep it down to 50 miles and they all laugh. Another £20,000 rolled into the kitty today. That's bought three wheelchairs, one for Josh. With this hard wheelchair, he'll be able to do what he want, when he want. If he wants to go somewhere, he can just do it. That'll help us immensely. Um, They're very expensive, aren't they? Yes. Um, Josh's chair's going to cost around £4,000, which we could never afford. Um, so to us, it's been life-saving. The charity really helped us. Josh suffers from bone vanishing syndrome, a rare degenerative disease, but doesn't qualify through the NHS for a custom-made chair. In this wheelchair's case, the lower leg length and the seat depth and the width of the chair will all grow as Josh grows, so it continues to be comfortable and it enables Josh to get the most out of the chair and to drive it safely and well. Josh has already mastered his buggy. The same can't be said, though, for some of the shots played by today's charity golfers. Tom Williams, BBC Look East, Sheringham.